Hi, this is your instructor, Teresa Palke. Welcome to our class. Okay, I am looking at one of the assignment samples using document.write to output to the page. You are allowed to use this in the beginning of the class, document.write. I would prefer you use the document object model, but I don't want to complicate things too fast, too soon. All right, so in this scenario, we're given some information. All right, we're saying we're given the cost of rice is $1.50 a pound, and we purchase two pounds. So the first thing you want to do is you want to declare a variable to store the cost of rice. And it, it's $1.50. We don't put dollar signs. It's just a number. Now, it is always a good idea Notice how nice this editor is. It knows things. It's not a bad idea to always have an alert testing your variables, even though if you look at it, it looks 100% correct. So let's save this. And here we are, $1.50. And let me close. All right. So this is, and then you can just comment it out. This is what I would like to see in your assignments. Rather, just, rather than just sitting down and doing something, it's always a good idea to make sure that your values are correct by testing them. So we purchased two pounds of rice. Here again, you don't need to put an LB. So I have declared two variables and I have initialized them with values. Notice I am using the camel case syntax. Notice I am trying to make those variable names meaningful and consistent. So I have rice cost and I have bean cost. Notice there's a similarity in the way that I name it. And then the beans qu quantity. All right, so we want to find out what is the cost of the rice. All right, now we, we know that we could just multiply 1.5 and 2. We didn't have to store these values in variables. In the programming world, you always want to have variables. You never want to have what is called a constant because the values can always change. So here I have a variable rice cost which contains the value of 1.5 times rice quantity which contains the value of 2 and I'm storing it here in this variable. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and we'll test. I will save. There we are. And I purposely made this assignment so that it's relatively easy to figure out. 1.5 times 2 is 3. All right, so this is how you start approaching a JavaScript problem. First, you identify what you have, store it in the variables. Then you start the basic calculations leading up to the more intricate calculations. All right, first we have to figure out how much the rice purchase cost. Then we finish, figure out how much the bean purchase cost. Then we're going to add them both together. All right, makes sense. So there's our initial purchase. And if you do one thing at a time in a logical order, 
you will approach the situation in a, in a very good manner that will be easy to work with. All right, now we need to have an employee discount. That was given to us. It's 5%. All right, so we have the initial purchase cost, and now we need to find out how much they're actually paying because they get an employee discount. So here we need another variable. It's called this discount, and it's going to be the initial purchase of the beans and rice times the employee discount. Here again, we could have just said times 0.05, but we want to store this in a variable because that value could change. It's always best to actually work with variables all of the time. Here again we have another shipping. It's a standard, it's a constant. It could change. So we're storing that in the variable and now we're cal calculating our final cost which is the initial purchase which came from the sum minus the discount, which came from here, excuse me, here, and plus the shipping. Now notice, it just so happens that JavaScript is going to perform these calculations in the right order. Now I could have put parentheses around here if I wanted to. All right, and depending on the type of calculations you're doing, remember, um, multiplication takes precedence over addition, so there are times when you will need to put things in parentheses. Now, we're writing this to the page. So we're just going to use document.write, and here's my literal. Notice I have a dollar sign there. Cost of rice concatenated with rice purchase. All right, so rice purchase is the variable up here. All right, so this is our initial, how much rice did we buy? Now, notice I have the two fixed. This is formatting. It's just going to make our page look more professional. Rather than just seeing a 3, because we have a dollar sign there, we're going to see 3.00. Now, we're also concatenating that with our HTML break literal, so that everything doesn't run across the page. So if I take a look at what my output looks like here, there, does that not look more professional than just having a three? And notice the break takes us down to the next line. This example is in your sample code. All right, so now we're writing document.write, the cost of beans, the same procedure, all right, we're writing the initial purchase, the employee discount, and the final cost. So this is essentially what I want you to learn how to do in this class, how to solve a problem. I will be giving you some information that needs some calculations to be performed. You will need to store the values in variables, do calculations, and output to the page in a logical professional manner. Here again, you don't need to have a beautifully formatted HTML document. Should you wish to do so, add some style sheets, that would be wonderful. You are not required to do that, as this is a JavaScript class. I would like to go over the Firebug plugin for the Firefox browser. This plugin is available for other browsers also. If you see on my right hand corner, there's my little Firebug. And if I click, notice I get a little console at the bottom. This is a Windows program and you can move things around. And we will look at this again in this class. And I'm primarily focusing on the console today and I might want to just clear any error messages. On the right hand side we have a little editor and I can put some JavaScript code in there. Now I just copied and pasted and I also have some error messages on the left and I'll just clear them out. It had to do with some of the keyboard. So here I have var x equals 2, 
var y equals 4, var z equals 9. And 9 is in quotations, meaning it is looked at as a literal. In Firebug, in Firebug, I can use the alert to find the output of an expression. So here I have x plus y, and if I click run, there we are. Now, supposing I made a mistake, I forgot my parenthesis. If I were to run, notice on the left there is my JavaScript error. And notice it actually shows me the values of things, what I've been doing also. So if I fix it and I clear, I click run, there we are. This does not work well with document write. Firebug has the console object.log method and if I wanted to write to the page I would use or write to the console this is the console <laughs> I'm right using console.log so this is a very nice little way of just testing JavaScript very quickly and easily rather than opening a, an HTML editor. Now notice that z equals 9. If I were to add x plus z and click run, notice I get 29 for an answer. Why? Because 9 is a literal, so what we're doing, we're concatenating them. Now what I like to do a lot when I'm testing what I like to do a lot when I'm testing code is to put something in quotations which tells me a little bit about what I'm doing. Alright, so here's a literal. Alright. And notice I'm going to have a space here, so I have a space on the left hand side. So rather than just using console.log and getting back a number, I have some kind of a description as to what I'm getting back. So here we have x plus y is 29. Now that is more handy when you're working with the alert because after a while when you see one alert after another with a number you tend to forget what values you're testing for. So we will come back to Firebug in the future to learn some more of the wonderful ways that we can use this for um, working with JavaScript. But this is just a beginning that I would like you to um, see. Now I would like to show you how to work with your JavaScript code using the editor. So uh, here I am in the Komodo editor. I have my three variables here, and I have an alert. Notice I have forgotten the ending, quotate parenthesis. One thing I like about the Komodo editor is when your syntax is incorrect, it will put this red wavy line. And if you put your cursor over it, it will actually show you what the mistake is most of the time. Here again, it's trying to determine what the mistake is. Sometimes it may not be exact. Now, if I were to run this in Firefox, and let me save that, usually if there is a JavaScript error, the code won't run at all, depending. Here we don't have the alert popping up at all because there was a problem with that closing parenthesis. Notice, because I have Firefox installed, Firebug installed, I have these little arrows. If I put my cursor over to the X, which means that there's a mistake, I'm trying to get that there, 
you can see there is the, the error right there. Uh, missing right parenthesis after argument list. Also, even if you don't have Firebug, all browsers come built within with some kind of web developer tools. And here I'm going to go to the um, web console. And if I choose the JavaScript option, which I recently did, there it shows me my error again. So this is one way that you can find your errors. And I will close this. Now here again, what I recommend you do when you're working in the editor, rather than just using an alert for testing, which is an ideal thing to do, put some kind of indication in here about what you're testing. And what we're doing, we're concatenating. We're concatenating this string, x plus y equals, and here's my opening quotation, my closing quotations. All right, now, and in JavaScript, they can be single quotations also, as long as you're consistent. I'm concatenating that expression, and I will be adding this expression. So if I save, and I load, there we are. And I find this is a lot more meaningful than just seeing a number.